Now, as we've mentioned and discussed in the past, one of the key concepts in wireless sensor networks is optimization of the network such that we do not consume a lot of energy and we maintain or maximize the lifetime of the network. So to illustrate another example or another way of achieving this, we look at this small topology we have here of five sensors, so N1, N2, N3, N4, and N5. And what we want to do is we want to transmit some kind of message from N1 over here to N5 over here. Now we could send that packet out from N1 through to um, let's say N3 and then on to N5, right? And we can see that we will only consume 4 joules of energy. But there could be a case where the transmission from N1 to N3 is successful, the transmission happens from N3 but is not able to successfully arrive at N5. And in that case, what has happened is we have wasted 4 joules of energy and we're going to have to do this transmission all over again. So what we could do is we could transmit a copy of that message via N3 to N5 and another copy of that message via N2 through N4 to N5. And that way what we've done is we've introduced a level of diversity by sending a copy in each one of the directions that N1 has some kind of collaboration where it has a collaboration with N2 and a collaboration with N3. So what we end up with are two copies of the same message being received at N5. Now over here the metric that we look at is not what is the total amount of energy that is consumed but we look at the average amount of energy that is consumed. So the total number of transmissions are five so we have one, two, three, four, five and if we add up these joule values we see that the total energy consumed is 17 joules so the average if we divide 17 by 5 gives us 3.4 joules of energy now here we introduce a new concept um, which is known as store and forward or cooperative relay right so i'm just going to go back here and quickly try to illustrate that in the store and forward concept the message goes from N1 to N3. It is received in its complete form. And once it is received, it is then sent from N3 to N5. Similarly, we have the copy that goes to N2. N2 receives it in its entirety. It then takes that complete message and sends it to N4. Once N4 has received the message in its entirety, it will then take that message and transmit it onto N5 and that concept is what we call store and forward. Another way of conserving energy is to use what we call cooperative relay. In cooperative relay what we're doing is we're not sending the entire message so if we want to draw the message here right we're not sending the entire message we're taking half of the message which we could call X and the other half of the message which we could call Y and we're transmitting half of that message down one path and the other half of the message down another path. So in this case the message or the part of the message X is received in its entirety at N3 and then N3 sends that message X onto N5 N2 receives part of the message Y in its entirety and then sends it on to N4 and then N4 transmits it on to N5. So in this case now again we've received two messages at N5 but these are not two identical copies. In fact they are parts of the same message which N5 is now going to assemble and recombine into the overall message that was being transmitted. And this concept is what we call cooperative relay. And since we are only transmitting a part of the message from each one of these nodes, the amount of energy that will be required will be less. And what we end up seeing is that the average 
will be less than the 3.4 joules we calculated when we're sending the whole message. So because I'm sending only a small part, I do not need the whole two joules now. I probably need half of that to get to N3. And then from N3, I don't need two joules. I maybe need half of that from N1, maybe four joules, one joule, and then maybe two joules over here. So the overall average of the transmission actually reduces due to this concept of cooperative relay. Another advantage of cooperative relay is because the messages are smaller, they're able to propagate and rec are received much quicker, which means that the overall latency is reduced.